Hi everybody, here's where I'm currently at. As you can see, I've made some upgrades and modification. Um, okay, as you can see, I've placed uh, an acrylic platform on the upper rotor section, so therefore more cores can be added and used to make the most of the energy that's being utilized and collected. Um, I'll explain what coils are being used for this today's video and the rotor is also connected on the same shaft below it so you have two rotors connected to the same shaft that's kind of rotating in the same direction which is both driven under the same driver circuit and you have the output power from the driver circuit which is the flyback energy that's being collected and distributed to the ultra capacitor which is rated at 16.6 .6 volts at 350 farads which then can be uh, used to run various loads which I've been doing running from a 100 watt DC scooter motor from a 500 watt square wave inverter which the load for that is a 100 watt rated halogen globe and um, the idea at this period of experimenting is to understand how well this pulse motor runs under pressure you know putting a lot of strain to see how well it performs during the under the load with the and measuring the charge and the discharge rate at the same time and try to find an a neutral point where you're getting this desirable output without compromising too much input of the energy and the direction where I'm going with this is having these two extra jumper leads that's also connected to the driver coil terminals which is connected in parallel to these two driver coils these two driver coils each of the coils are six millimeters thick diameter 50 meters long that's both connected in series and uh, it is lit wire to make sure there's no uh, inductive losses or skin effects or anything like that when using the high frequency cap and pushing it to the limits which these two jumper leads gets connected to this AC power transformer and this AC power transformer is rated at 100 VA where you have the 12, sorry, 12 and 24 input voltage that gets connected to, which then you have your output leads of 240 volts, which one side they're having a diode connected to it, which is both connected to the supercapacitor. The rating of this capacitor is 40 volts DC at 68,000 microfarads, which is then running this uh, step down buck converter into 12 volts through 12 volt regulator which then also gets stepped up using a 200 watt DC to DC boost converter which is set at 24 volts which is then running another driver circuit and as you can see the other driver circuit has its driver another driver coil set placed in the upper rotor where you have two um, 40 ohm 18 gauge wires kind of connected in series together that's creating a push pull force within the rotor and also collecting the flyback energy that's being collected to the top ultra capacitor which has the same value as the other capacitor that I've shown below it and I'm just waiting for another DC boost converter and other components which then the idea is connecting that ultra capacitor output directly back to the input to this driver circuit which then runs the whole process again through a cyclic fashion and while you're running that without using a power supply or a battery you're also trickle charging or charging at a good rate whether it's your battery or your ultra capacitors or your desired resistive load with the right impedance matching which then you have yourself an independent looped system
So, this is where I'm currently at. So that's the voltage from the top. I'm charging power from here. I'm also charging another power from below it. I'm also charging this super capacitor that acts like a buffer. So it sits in the voltage range. So this discharge and discharge rate through this transformer that gets distributed back up again is constant and maintained. And it's all under the load. You also have a multimeter to the left which just connected to this uh, thinner gauge, higher turn coil, which acts like a pickup gauge. So I can see how fast it travels under RPMs when it's also being placed with or without loads, because I don't have a tachometer. So this is a good indicator to show how well or how slow it runs. And it's purely intuitive, you know, as you can see, it's just, kind of seeing the dynamics and the exchanging of energy and fields and forces into play within this system. So what I might do, I won't take up too much of your time, but I'll try to run certain things like I'll turn off this charge right here and you'll see it now drop all the way down and then that will stop charging I'll disconnect it from the DC boost converter as you know it's not charging now as you can see it's just sitting there slowly getting drained and it just drops that back down to uh, just over 100 milliamps now it's just to show you the speed of it when you remove the load off the RPMs of the rotor also slow down which is interesting because usually when you apply the load and you're generating the lens effect it just slows down your performance to the point where it can just freeze your rotor entirely but this just showed by me unhooking the load you know it does you know, it's actually running less efficient than it was being under load. So I will connect it back on to this power transformer. It's charging this back up again. And as you see, there's no real effect on the speed until I place this under the load. You can see the speed to the left is picking up and the voltage from the super capacitor is kind of buffering where it's, it's going to stabilize within the point where I've kind of tuned it to where I want to set which is now also running this driver circuit. This multimeter has a tendency to turn itself off every now and then which is then charging the ultra capacitor. So it happens to run efficiently under load rather than without a load, according to the way I've set this up. Now, the idea is to apply it into this region here too, where I could run load as well. You know, so I might give this a quick crack. So I'll be connecting the 100 watt DC motor to it from this ultra capacitor here. There you go. As you can see, the ultra capacitor is getting drained. And, but however though, the input current remains kind of stable. You know, it's kind of like a give and take through the fluctuations. Now look what happens when I connect this lead from the another ultra capacitor to this ultra capacitor, it helps reinforce the recharging mechanism and it just keeps it there and running there and it's climbing its charge without infecting the input current, without so much affecting the RPM 
as much. Still buffering within the supercapacitor, the voltage range. And it's slowly taking energy from that too. But as you can see, if you have the right pressure and RPMs and the frequency that matches the charge and discharge rate, then this can run quite well more than you would ever need to cost more energy import. Very happy with that. So, but this uh, connection output here is more specifically with the idea that I want to run back to here. So therefore, you don't need this power supply. So, yeah, I just thought I'll show you that quickly. Um, as you can see, it's uh, maintained its RPM without dropping it. It's slightly draining from there, but then again, it will stabilize to the point where it will still help increase an extra charge to here. So it's all finding the right tuning spot with the dynamical interrelationship with all these components and the forces that's happening including the the torque within the rotors and the collapsing magnetic field from the you know flyback effect and having all this that's happening so the gain is quite large and it's significant and it's not hocus pocus you know and i haven't even begun to connect these other coils yet which also can be utilized you know this is another coil i'll get around so you can get a good angle view at it so you know this is a really massive coil here it's another one you can see the hand comparison it's quite big and this is a 30 gauge um, turned it weighs about a good eight kilos this is a heavy gauge wire which I've ran out of multimeters for me to connect it so therefore and there's other coils here that can be connected to it as well I mean the one in the middle is that far left multimeter that kind of gives us a speed indicator but the one here and the one on the opposite side is not connected these two have these two are connected in series that's acting as secondary drive coils and you got a spare coil over there that's waiting to be used and just waiting for more parts to arrive in the shipment so that way i can try it out in its entirely so so i think that's pretty much it um Sorry, it's been a short while. I haven't posted a video. Um, more things will be explained and you'll see a lot better things will happen. So just want to say thank you very much for following and being patient. And uh, I hope you take care and all the best. Peace.